So electric fields often taught at A level. Uh, I know there's practicals you can do with semolina and oil and it gets a bit messy, but this one's more to do with um, equipotential field lines rather than just the direction of the fields. Absolutely, yeah. Um, this is uh, this is a practical from um, uh, that's been around a while and uh, and it's available on uh, more details are available on uh, IOP Spark. Um, but this is just to show you exactly how it's set up and exactly what you can do and what you need and so a few more variations that we do. And it looks fairly straightforward. And the, the equipment is just a cell and um, you've just got a voltmeter there, haven't you? So it's pretty, yep. you know, it's it's not kind of high, you know. Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 stuff, no, no, it really isn't, thankfully. Um, so we've got uh, a backboard, which is just um, uh, just a piece of uh, any old wood, really. Hardboard MDF will do. Yeah. Um, uh, a piece of normal uh, file paper yeah. cut into the right same shape. Uh, then we've got carbon paper, uh, which is um, a, a bit old school now, but still available and fairly mm -hmm. cheap. Again, cut to the right size. And then the only slightly specialist thing, this is conducting paper. So this is normal paper that's had a coating of, um, I think, colloidal graphite to make it into uh, to make it into a reasonably good conductor. We've then got, um, uh, acting as electrodes, we've just got uh, bare metal bulldog clips. And to make the electrodes a little bit better, we've got some pieces of copper sheet that we've cut into, uh, in this case, a very simple rectangular shape. Yep. Uh, but as I'll show you, you can actually, um, sky's the limit, or your imagination is the limit, uh, for other electrode shapes. Uh, so we also have some with uh, um, a hole in the middle, okay. donut shape. Uh, you can also have spikes, uh, triangular spikes, rectangular spikes. And I think you've got a whole class of um, this as well, haven't you? And so it, yeah, and we've made up a whole class set of this, uh, because the great thing about this, unlike a lot of electric fields, um, uh, practical stuff is that this isn't a demo. This is something for the kids to do themselves, which, mm -hmm. is, which is really nice. Absolutely. So uh, one and a half volt cell, um, negative uh, connected to that, to that electrode, positive connected to that electrode. Voltmeter reading between the, uh, uh, the negative uh, pole of the cell and uh, this, which are um, called, uh, th these might be in a, um, a draw marked jockeys and you might think they don't look like small horse riders. Um, but if you haven't got one of these, uh, it's slightly less accurate, but you can just do exactly the same experiment just with a four millimeter plug. But if you do happen okay. to have a drawer of these, they're just a tiny bit more accurate. And that which just is means nice. that it's a bit more like a sort of the end of a screwdriver, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so what happens? And at this point, so you've got it connected to a battery, so zero volts, 1.5 volts. And between the two, you've got two straight electrodes. So you've got an electric field. Uh, you can imagine the field lines going... Um, from positive to negative, so nice straight parallel equidistant, few mm -hmm. edge effects there. Yeah. And then uh, you can hopefully also imagine the equipotentials that will be around it as well that are uh, at 90 degrees to the uh, field lines. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing is because uh, uh, electric potential is measured in units of joules per coulomb, which is the same as a volt, you can use a voltmeter, which of course measures volts, joules per coulomb, um, to measure the potential uh, relative to the negative at any particular point. So if I stick this electrode on here, we measure zero, not surprisingly, because we're basically just measuring the potential between the negative and the negative. Yeah. And if we put it there, we get one and a half. Okay, so and because this is conducting paper, as we drag the electrode from one to the other, the voltmeter just goes up nice and steadily from zero to 1.4, 1.5. And so in the middle, Volts. in the kind of the very middle point, it should be about 0 0.75. And in the very middle, it should be about three quarters, give or take, uh, of a volt. Yeah. Which is lovely. Now, the whole reason we've got the uh, uh, plain paper and the um, uh, carbon paper is that the idea is, and, and this then becomes, um, it takes a reasonable amount of time to do properly. What you want to do is uh, mark off a whole series of equipotentials uh, in this way. So let's say, for example, we want to find the um, 0 0.5 volt equipotential. So we just go lightly across the paper until we hit 0 0.5 volts. And then yeah. because of the carbon paper, if we now just push down on that like you would with a pen quite hard yeah. and then just move sideways look for another point where it's 0 0.5 near enough yeah they can the class, take the time yeah. another one where it's 0 0.5 push down and just find a good number of points where it's 0 0.5 volts around the side as so uh, I can't, can't get it around the side yeah. it goes off the side of the paper 0.5 volts and so on and so on and so on you get the idea I'm sure and so and when then, you reveal that on the sheet at the end and then when you're done and then of course you repeat for maybe the 0.6 the 0.7 the 1.0 whatever it might be and then when you take it all off at the end this is where it counts 
Absolutely. Moment of truth. You've got the beginnings of an equipotential. You can uh, draw where the electrodes were. And by the time you've got loads of those dots, you then join them all up and you've got a lovely equipotential pattern. Um, so you've actually got, uh, instead of, uh, or as well as talk, doing the semilunar and the oil, which yeah is messy and technicians really tend not to like it because of that. Um, and of course, it's, all, it's only a demo. The kids mm. see it and I find it never works enormous. It's, it's all right, it's, it's worth doing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but the, I, I find this so much better. Um, and the other nice thing about having, uh, for example, electrodes, which are not just um, a simple shape, is that uh, when you connect them up, uh, and you can get pupils to predict this, the only thing that's worth actually being uh, aware of if you're doing that, and especially if you're doing some of these spike things, mm -hmm. um, is that, of course, the electrode needs to be in contact with the paper all around. Oh, okay. It's only where the electrode's in contact with the paper that it, if you like, counts. It does anything interesting. So if I want to do that, um, you might need to sort of push it down with your fingers a little bit. Um, but what you should find, or you can get pupils to predict it, what will be true about the potential there. So if I touch the electrode, it's 1.4 volts. Um, what will happen if I go around in here and uh, Either they will predict or you can show them that basically inside a hollow conductor it's just one big equipotential, which because of the way field lines and equipotentials interrelate, that means there's, because it's all one big equipotential, it means there's no field lines there. So there's no, um, no overall field, um, uh, no field lines within um, any conductor. And if you earth it, there's no field at all, hence Faraday cages um, and things like that. The reason we have spiked ones is partly to show that the field lines start off at one end being, uh, the equipotentials here start off being fairly parallel to the surface, but as they get closer, they start to follow the contours of this surface, again, as you'd expect. And the thing you can build, bring out here is that as the equipotentials do that around the spike, if you plot the field lines, then of course you can show that the field lines come together at the spike. In other words, the electric field strength is stronger, mm -hmm. and that can relate to things like why the tines of a fork produce sparks in a microwave, okay. but a spoon, for example, might not because I'll it hasn't got that. those sharp bits. <laughs> um, at your own risk. Yeah. And uh, it also relates to things like how lightning conductors work yeah. as well in terms of spikes and uh, increasing field strength and all sorts of things like that. So it's a lovely way of relating it back. Again, just make sure that that is definitely in contact with it, otherwise. And there concludes the lesson. And there concludes the lesson. Here endeth the lesson. <laughs>